Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE dryer blower wheel and the clamp and screw kit. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get them at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the packages, you're going to get the blower wheel and the clamp and screw kit. The blower wheel and the clamp are located in the blower housing and the blower wheel circulates the hot air through the dryer. The main reason to be changing them out is if the blower wheel is damaged and it's not circulating the hot air and the clothes aren't drying. The main reason to be changing out the clamp is if you are changing the blower wheel and you find out that it's damaged. In order to get to the part, we have to take the dryer apart. First thing we're going to do is use our Torque 20 driver and take the four screws out across the top of the console. Once you have the screws out, we're going to lift the console up and disengage the three tabs that lock into the top panel. And then you can just set the console on the back of the dryer. Then we can open up the dryer door and use our Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws that hold the front panel to the top. Once you have both screws out, you can close the dryer door. To take the top off, we're going to lift it up and pull it off the dryer. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. With the top out of the way, we can remove these two screws. There's one on each side. It holds the front panel to the cabinet. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Once you have the screws out, you want to make sure you hold on to the front panel. We're going to take it off in a minute, but you don't want it to fall off. To get the front panel off, we're going to carefully lean it forward so we can disconnect the door switch wiring harness. Once you have it down far enough, we have to reach down and move this shield. We're going to pull this tab out from the cabinet and then swing it out of the way so we have access to the wires. There's actually two wires on the switch that we have to take off and we have to disconnect this union. All you have to do is unplug it and then we can take the wires off the door switch. First one we're going to take off is the yellow with the red stripe. That's going to go on the top. If they're on there tight, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to pop them off. And then we had the white one, which went to the bottom one. Once you have those two disconnected, we can let go of the shield and then we can lift the door off the mounting tabs. Now that we have the front panel off, we're going to take the drum out. In order to do that, we're going to take these two screws out on the cabinet and disconnect it from the support bulkhead. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. With the screws out of the way, we can reach in and take the belt off the pulleys. In order to get the belt off the pulleys, we're going to reach in between the drum and this bulkhead. You may have to lift it up a little bit to make some room. We're going to reach back and grab the idler pulley, and you have to pull it down towards the bottom of the dryer, and that'll make some slack in the belt so you can get it off the pulleys. Now that we have the belt off the pulleys, we can use it to lift it out of the dryer. You need to guide it out of these cutouts on the cabinet. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. With the drum out of the way, we have access to the blower housing in the left-hand side of the dryer. First thing we're going to do is use our Phillips screwdriver and take off this thermostat. Once you have the screw out, you can just take the thermostat out and set it down on the dryer floor. We're not going to disconnect any of the wires, but we have to take it out so it doesn't uh, interfere with taking the blower and motor out. Once you have the thermostat out, we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to remove these two long screws in the front. Once you see the screw come out of the motor plate back there, you can just pull it out. Now we're on the back side of the motor, we're going to remove these two screws that hold the motor to the bottom of the dryer. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out.
Now that we have the screws out, we can take the motor out. When you're pulling back on this, you want to lift up on the back half of the motor bracket so that the bracket doesn't catch right on this lip right here. So all you have to do is lift up on the bracket and guide the blower out of the housing. Once you have it free, you can guide the blower all the way out. If the idler pulley falls off while you're taking it out, don't worry, just set it aside. We'll put it on later. Now that we have the blower out of the housing, we can reach in with a 3 8 inch nut driver or socket, whatever you have. We're going to take out the screw that holds the clamp on. Once it comes loose from the back side, you can take the front half of the clamp off with the screw. And then we can pull the blower off the motor shaft. And then we can pull the back half of the clamp out. The reason we're showing you the clamp and the blower together is because over the years, what happens is the clamp gets rounded out. This is supposed to be a nice D shape on the bottom. Instead, it's half eaten away from all the years of stopping and starting. So you really need to look at this clamp and see if it's rounded out and replace it if necessary. The other main problem is the years of wear will actually cut grooves into the motor shaft. And what happens is they get really bad and even if you put a new clamp on it, you can't get it to stay tight. And you may end up having to actually replace the whole motor if you can't get your blower to tighten down. Here's the old blower wheel and clamp and screw kit next to the new ones. If you already have these, great. If not, you can get them at appliancepartspros.com. To put the clamp back on, we're going to put the back half on first. It's the one that has the cutout in the bracket. And it's also D-shaped and we put the flat on the bottom so we can slide the back half on. Then we can put the blower wheel on. Same as the clamp, you want to make sure that the flat of the D is towards the bottom. So we can push it onto the shaft. Once you have the blower wheel on, you want to take the clamp and kind of get it coming through that little rounded opening. Once you have it through, make sure to push the blower on all the way. Then you can put the front half on. Then we can grab our 3 8 inch nut driver and put the screw in. Once you have the screw tightened down, you want to make sure that the blower doesn't move on the shaft and then we can put the motor and the blower back into the housing. Once you have it tightened down, we're going to rotate it over so we can hook up the idler pulley. If yours fell off, we have to put it back in this little notch right here. We're going to take the idler and kind of wrap it underneath all these wires and come from below and put it into that opening right there. And then you kind of have to hold it there while you guide the motor down and lay it down and try to get it in the blower housing. Once you have it down, the idler should stay in place. And then we can push the motor forward into the blower housing. Once you have it pushed all the way forward, you want to make sure that these little tabs right here on each side are locked into place. Once they're in, then we can start to put the dryer back together. Now they have the blower into the housing, but before we mount the motor to the floor, you want to make sure that the idler pulley is underneath that black switch so that when you pull on the idler pulley, it hits that switch, and if the belt breaks, it'll tell the dryer that the belt is broken. Once you have that in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in to hold the motor to the floor of the dryer. Now that we have those two screws in, we can go to the front and put the long ones in. To put the long screws in, we're going to feed it all the way back and you may have to grab the motor plate and pull it closer so you can get the screw started. Once you have it started, we can use our Phillips screwdriver and tighten it down.
Once you have both long screws in, we can remount the thermostat. To put the thermostat back in, all you have to do is lift it up. We're going to make sure that this side goes underneath this tab right here. And then we can lower it down and put the screw in to hold it in place. Once you have the thermostat mounted, we can put the rest of the dryer back together. Now we can put the drum back in the dryer. We want to make sure that the shaft on the center of the drum goes into the opening. We're going to use the belt to lift it up and guide it back through the cutouts. Once you have it in place, you can let the belt down and you want to make sure the ribs are against the drum. Then we can go down and put the belt around the pulleys. In order to put the belt back through the pulleys, we're going to do the same as before and reach inside and push the idler pulley down towards the bottom of the machine. Once you have the belt rotted through, you can pull your arms out. We can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the two screws in that hold the support bulkhead to the cabinet. Now we can put the front of the dryer on. To put the front panel on, we're going to line it up and set it onto the mounting brackets. There's one on each side. Once you have it on there, we're going to lift it up. Once you have the front panel lifted up a little bit, we're going to swing this cover out of the way, just like when we took it out. And we're going to attach the white wire to the back post. And the yellow with the reddish stripe on the top one. And then we're going to grab the black one that snaps together and push them together so we get a good connection. Once you have them all reconnected, we're going to lift the cover back over and lock the locking tab into the side. And then we can lift up the front panel and put it up the rest of the way. Once you have the front panel up almost all the way, we're going to have to lift up the drum so it rides on the glides. Once you have the front panel up, then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in from the back. With the front panel secured, we can put the top on the dryer. To put the top on, you want to make sure that this tab right here goes underneath the control panel bracket here on each side. And then when you lower it down, this tab right here is going to go into this opening. Once you have the top on and in place, we can open up the door and put the screws in to hold it in place. Once you have the screws tightened down, we can close the dryer door. Next, we can lower the console back in place, and you want to make sure that these three tabs go into the opening on the top. Once you have it set down, you can push it back into place, and we can use our Torque 20 driver to put the screws in. Now that we have the dryer put back together, we can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair, brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.